And then the Federal Reserve just came out recently and said, hey, guys, we expect a slight recession. And if you're anyone like me and you hear slight and the Fed saying slight and they said transitory and we saw what happened, you have to be nervous about risk assets in the future. And that's where I am. I honestly think that stock market's getting ready to have a second half that is going to be atrocious. And my guess is it drags down crypto as well. Bitcoin abruptly reversed gains on April 19th as a cascade of long liquidations sent BTCUSD plummeting lower. The sudden move followed an equally strong rebound above the $30,000 mark the day prior, with bulls ultimately unable to preserve higher levels. As volatility returned, Bitcoin thus fell to its lowest since April 10th as the upside saw its latest challenge. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, Gareth Soloway shares with us his outlook on the Fed hiking rate, the CPI report, and his new prediction for Bitcoin in 2023. So as of now, anyways, Bitcoin remains just underneath a major, major technical level, this 30,500 level. Uh, we've hammered on it. We can see, in fact, on the chart right here, lots of resistance. We've tried to push above it. Each time we're failing, at least at this point. Yesterday, we pulled back pretty sharply and then rallied back today as there's kind of a risk on attitude back in the market. But the bottom line is this 30,500 level, number one, it's an even number. So it's Anytime you get above a 30,000 or a 40, there's always going to be a, a tendency to get kind of the last people in the trade, which weirdly enough is not the best thing because once you get those last people in, you don't have a lot of new buyers. And so I think that's what's, what's happening here with crypto. We're into this level where if we zoom out, this was the low from the 2021 bull market cycle. And it was also the low right here. And we've basically done a round trip. And I know I have a lot of lines on the chart, but we've done a round trip from that breakdown, which occurred in June of 2022, all the way back to where we are right now. So again, if we look back here, and again, this area here to here, that's where we're hammering on right now. And to me, that's a huge psychological level. And it's also a level where it will pivot me into thinking that the low is in. If we successfully hold above 30,500 for multiple days, I'm really looking for five to seven days, then to me, you probably do have a low on Bitcoin in. As of now, I'm not convinced of it. I still think this is a bear market rally. I feel, still think there's more shoes to drop in the risk asset market. No, the rally hasn't really. I mean, again, if we look back at the, the bear market of 2017, well, 2018, 2019, I mean, we had rallies from 3,500 all the way back to 10,000 and then back to 3,500. So, so you've had these bounces in Bitcoin that have actually even been bigger than what we're seeing here. Uh, we're just up around 100% or just under 100% versus back then it was 200%. So I think we have to keep that in mind. I also think that if you look at what the Fed has said, you have to be very careful here. So we do know that the, the SEC continues to sue and, and kind of put down regulation or the beginning structure of regulation in crypto. And then the Federal Reserve just came out recently and said, hey, guys, we expect a slight recession. And if you're anyone like me and you hear slight and the Fed saying slight and they said transitory and we saw what happened, you have to be nervous about risk assets in the future. And that's where I am. I honestly think that stock market's getting ready to have a second half that is going to be atrocious. And my guess is it drags down crypto as well. So here's some, here's some positives. So when we met in December and we had our live right. interview, you asked me what sure. my favorite asset was for 2023. What did I tell you? I think it was gold, right? Absolutely. And gold has been a rock star. It's not outperforming Bitcoin at this point. That's true. Uh, but it has been an amazing mover off of the lows since the start of the year. And it honestly is going to go higher. Uh, you have all the makings for it. I mean, basically, if the Fed gets inflation under control, um, then you still have the case where it's probably because the economy's collapsed or in a recession. And again, that would then could make people less likely to spend money. But again, that recession is a kind of a scary situation. So gold goes higher. If the Fed can't get inflation under control, gold goes higher in that scenario as well. So I'm still bullish on gold. Sure, it's had a big run, might get a pullback. We've had a little bit of a downtick. But I think by third quarter, you break above that 2075 level and you're off to the races at least to 2100 by uh, 2300 by year end. Whether MicroStrategy sells its Bitcoin tokens to pay down debt is closely tied to how the cryptocurrency performs. The position is not large enough to distort prices, but it does present a sentiment risk in a down cycle, Bernstein said in a research report Wednesday. 
the business analytics software company is the largest corporate holder of Bitcoin as a balance sheet treasury asset, owning around 140,000 BTC at an average cost of $29,800. The stash is worth about $4 billion at current prices, the report said. The company has about $2.2 billion in debt, with repayments due in 2025 and beyond. It has pledged 15,000 of its bitcoins, Bernstein said. High BTC prices mean a stronger balance sheet, higher stock prices, and easier debt repayment without selling its BTC holdings. MicroStrategy holds around 0.7% of total Bitcoin in circulation, representing about 20% of daily average traded volume in spot markets, the note said. The potential liquidation of MicroStrategy's BTC during bear markets creates an overhang for BTC in a down cycle, it said. The biggest thing for me is when you look at yields and the dollar, right? So if you look at the yield, and in fact, we'll go to the 10-year yield right here. Okay, so the 10-year yield topped out last October. The dollar topped out last October. When did the stock market top out or bottom out? It bottomed out last October. So as yields have fallen, that's bullish for gold as well. As the dollar falls and pulls off of these highs, that's also bullish for gold. So you have those two things that the stock market right now likes, and also it's good for the, the bull case for gold. And I think lastly, you have to just be in the camp where you say, okay, inflation, yes, it's come down, but it's still elevated. And, and therefore that's also a bullish case for gold as well. Yeah, so, so at least for me on the 10-year, the 10-year chart has this trend line here that we bounced off of. My guess is we're headed back down there by the second half of this year. That would be around 3% on the 10-year. So I actually think there's further downside on the 10-year. Another ETF that's a great way to follow it is when yields go down, um, the TLT tends to go up. It's kind of an inverse ETF here. And you have this beautiful sideways channel of bullish consolidation, which eventually tells me that that the TLT will move up, which tells me yields go down. The only way yields are going down is if, if we do get a recession or at least a slowing economy that's significant, which then basically makes the Fed potentially have to start backing off their rate hikes in the second half. I think that for the most part, inflation is going to come back to about 3% and be very, very sticky there. And that's going to be problematic for the Fed because they can't really stimulate in a massive way when inflation is at 3% already because you stimulate at 3%, we go to 12%, 15% inflation off of the same type of money printing that they did in 2020 through 2021. So in other words, it's most likely the mere fact that you're going to see um, the economy really stutter. I think you get into a recession in the second half. In fact, the, set, the Fed basically said that just a week ago. Um, interestingly enough, the stock market has ignored it. Risk assets have ignored that. But again, the Fed is telling us exactly what they're expecting. And I always look at it like it's going to be worse. If the Fed says something, always think three steps worse than what the Fed is telling us. Wait, what did they say exactly? They said there's going to be a recession? Yeah, they said to expect, last week they said to expect a minor recession. A minor recession, or, or you know, I don't know what the term was, but it was basically like, oh, just a tiny recession. But again, if you're like me, and I said this at the beginning, uh, yeah. they, they were like, oh yeah, we'll have inflation, but it's transitory. So it's, it's one of those scenarios where, to me, they always try to sugarcoat because they don't want to scare the markets and cause a collapse. But smart investors have to start prepping for a worse recession than what they're saying. And again, that's right. just risk management. So is it a good time to invest in Bitcoin? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.